Um, in the 60s, you worked with the Richardsons. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, in the 1960s, I was with Charlie and Eddie Richardson. And it was great times. They were two smashing fellas, and I have no regrets whatsoever. They were terrific guys. You ran uh, a company called the Atlantic Machines. How did you put the people off who wanted to interfere with those machines in the clubs? Yes, we had a very good, we had a untold machines in most of the clubs in London, all over the country. And we had no difficulty in anyone else trying to rip our machines open or anything like that. No trouble whatsoever. Um, I, I believe one of your horses said that you used a flamethrower. Uh, that was on a little gang up in Liverpool. It was really good. General Montgomery would have been proud of me with that one. Um, tell us about the events with Eric Mason that led up to the torture trial. Well, I'd been down the Astor Club and uh, a fight was there, occurred, between two ordinary people. Nothing to do with me in any way whatsoever. The police were called and quietly pay, paid the bill and I left. And when I was outside in Barclay Square, waiting for my car to arrive, Eric Mason come up and said, wait till I tell Ronnie and Reggie, you started that fight. I said, what are you talking about? And he carried on in this vein. Now, in the world I was in, that was a very serious thing to say, especially when it was nothing to do with me in any way at all. So when our car arrived, I just kidnapped him, slung him in, and took him to Atlantic Machines and set about him with an axe and dumped him outside a London hospital with his fingers on his head like that and the axe right the way through stuck into his head. And I've sued the police and the hospital authorities ever since to get me axe back. If I bought in Wars, I wouldn't have minded, but if it was a cracker, I bought in Arons. He said he, he had, he wrote a book, he said he had 380 stitches. Not true, he had over 800. He went to see Reggie and Ronnie when he came out of the hospital, after four months, complaining. They gave him £10 each and slung him out. The, the evidence said that, that you removed his teeth with pliers, is that true? Yes. There goes around a story, well, come out of the so-called trial, that I allegedly pulled a guy's teeth out with pliers. I only wished it had been true, because at least when I was doing me 20 years, wouldn't it been lovely lying in my cell and going, oh, what a good job I made of that back molar. But it wasn't true. My poor sister Eva, the guy who said I pulled his teeth out, Benny Causton, he approached Eva and said to her, look, if you give me a certain amount of money, I'll come with you to a solicitor's and I'll tell the truth that it didn't happen. Eva said, yes, certainly. Took him to a solicitor's and he made the statement saying it wasn't true that he, about the teeth. L.B. Woods, who was with George Cornell, when he got shot by Ronnie Cray, was he the chauffeur? And that was it. it. Eva got a statement off him at the solicitors and everything. But as soon as he left the solicitors and Eva had dropped him home, he went straight to the police and said they'd threatened him. And that's why he done it. My poor sister Eva and Elby were arrested for perverting the course of justice and they both got three years.